I'm John Buchanan. In this video, we're going to look at what I call spot automation tricks. Sometimes what we want with automation is we might have a volume line, maybe a fade in, which lasts over eight bars and it just slowly fades in and we get a nice linear rise. Or maybe we get the same thing with the synth part where the filter cutoff rises and falls in a predictable manner. But sometimes what we want to use automation to do is to switch on an effect for just a moment, just a split second, just to pull out an individual effect within a track and just make it do something unpredictable. And in this video, we're going to look at a couple of ways where we can use automation to do that kind of a trick. Let's just hear the track we'll be working with. Okay, so there's eight bars of our track. Now, what I'm going to do first of all is to focus on this little sort of uh, vocal loop, which is on the first track. We're just going to solo that for a moment, put a loop around it. So let's just hear it by itself. Okay, so this is an Apple loop, and actually there are some reverb and delay effects that are kind of printed into this audio file. I'd quite like this to be a little bit drier. So before we get into our sort of spot effects, what I'm going to try and do is to see whether or not I can make it drier. Using the dynamics uh, options, I'm going to grab my noise gate, and what I'm going to see if I can do is to sort of get the gate to close between each individual uh, sort of little bit of the sample. So in other words, what we're doing is reducing the quieter moments, which maybe include the reverb and delay. Let's just see if that's going to be possible. So I'm going to increase the threshold a bit um, and see what happens here. Okay, so that's working. So what we've done is we've sort of chopped this up using a noise gate. Fine, so now what we've got is a drier sort of area that we can work with. And the reason in particular that I've done that is because one thing I might want to do is to sort of try and add a spot reverb effect of my own to a particular moment of this vocal part. But to start with, what we're actually going to do is, just, uh, is to create a spot effect using um, pitch shifting instead. So what I'm going to do again, underneath my noise gate, is I'm going to drop back into my plugin folder, and I'm going to come to pitch, and I'm going to come to pitch shifter. Now Logic's pitch shifter allows you to offset the pitch of whatever sound you feed into it. What I can do first of all is to select the sort of semitone um, offset that I want. So seven semitones would be a fifth. So in other words, if this uh, note that was playing was a C, I'd be hearing a G over the top of it using um, the, a seven semitone uh, offset. But obviously I'm free to set that up to 12 semitones, an octave in either direction. We'll come back to that in a moment. And what I can also do is to set a mix balance between the dry signal, the original, and the process signal. So if I want to, what I could do would be to set a blend between these two um, sort of uh, points. So we're hearing as much of the original as the sort of superimposed um, pitch shift uh, offset. So in other words, we're going to hear the original vocal a bit, and we're going to hear the pitch shifted version as well. like that. Okay, so what I want to do, in fact, is to set the mix to 100%. I only want to hear the pitch shifted version of this um, particular trick. And what I'm going to do is to actually set a pitch offset that's down an octave rather than up an octave. So there we go, we're in good shape. However, I don't want this pitch shift to happen the whole way through this part. At the moment, this is a static effect. At the moment I press play, all of this audio is going to be down 12 semitones. What I want to do instead is to set a point where suddenly this effect switches in and then it's gone again. And what we're going to do with our spot automation is to see how that's possible. So firstly, what I'm going to do is to press A to open up the automation window. We're going to just make this a little larger so we can see it more clearly. And what I'm going to do is to select the parameter that I want to work with. So first thing I'm going to do is to drop here. I don't want to change volume. I want to change the mix dial within the pitch shifter. It stands to reason that if the mix is at 0%, I'm going to hear only the original dry signal. And if it's at 100%, I'm only going to hear the pitch shifted version. So that should work so long as we can find this parameter to change. So that's going to be within this drop down menu here. And here what I can do is to come into pitch shift and there is mix. So what I'm going to do is to um, press that I want that to go on to 100% and or select this individual parameter and we'll see that 100% is currently selected because that's the value that I'm seeing here. So how can I create a point 
at the moment where I want this effect to switch in? Well, I could do it manually. I might decide I'm going to just click here anywhere to create a point. And then what I want to do, I want to have this effect switch on for the sort of end of bar five here. So I could create a point here and one here, and then I could drop this down to this point here. And then I could create another one here and another one here and try and make these all really super close to each other. And I might just about get the result that I want. But I've had to click four times and it still looks to me like actually that might not be quite as accurate there as I'd like it to be. So what I'm actually going to do is to use Command and Z to undo those steps and think a little bit more carefully about how I might add my spot effect instead. Now, right after the end of the point where I want this effect to switch back off to zero, I've actually got a region line here. And that might be really useful. What I want to do now is to create another one here. I'm going to grab um, the scissors tool within the toolbar and I'm going to just chop right here. And now what I've done is to isolate the region where I want to apply this effect. And if I now come to the mix option or the mix menu here, what I can do is to create track automation. And what I want to do is to create two automation points at the region borders. Well, we know what the region borders are. They're the points where one region stops to become another one. And what we're going to get is two points at both ends. Why do we want two? Well, here's why. If I select that option, what we've now got is the little nodes that we want here. And what that means is that if I select the previous bit of automation, I can drop that all the way down to zero and I can select the subsequent piece of information and drag that all the way down to zero, just leaving me 100% mix at the point where I want it. If we'd only created one point at the border, then of course it wouldn't have been possible to create those offsets. So that's why two points matters. Let's see whether or not that's delivering the result that we want. <laughs> Good, okay, it's a little bit late. Interestingly, this effect is a little bit latent. What I'm going to do is to turn on latency compensation, which should fix that problem. Good. Okay, so what we've now got is a little drop from a pitch point of view at that moment in the track. And interestingly, what we could do would be to create another moment here if we wanted to as well. And again, what we could do, because it's the very end of the track, is just draw this one in if we wanted to. So remember, you can draw those points manually if you want to. That's fine. Now, what I also want to do is to create a stop or a, a, a spot effect from an automation point of view for the drum part, which is on the next track down as well. But what I want to do here is to create a moment where just an individual hit sends into a reverb. So in other words, we're going to get one hit, which is really reverberant. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is to set that reverb up. Let's solo this sound. And what I'm going to do is to set a new auxiliary bus. Let's select the first available one, which is bus two. I'm going to turn the send level up to unity gain. And then what I'm going to do is to come into the reverb folder and grab chromoverb. And what I'm going to do is to find something which feels like it might be appropriate. I'm going to go for a dark room. And I'm going to set a nice long, in fact, I can even set the decay time by um, beat here if I want to. So what I'm going to do is to switch that option on and maybe we'll create a half note um, reverb time. So what I should hear now when I press play, because this send is on, is we should hear a really reverberant version of this drum loop. Now, it's these two hits at exactly the moment that my little pitch moment is happening in the vocal that I want to add this reverb. So what I need to think is, OK, well, what is switching that reverb on at the moment and how can I automate it? Well, it stands to reason that the way that it's being switched on is via this auxiliary send. In other words, if I turn the send down to zero, we get no effect. And if I turn it up to the point where it was before, we get that effect. So that's the parameter that I want to automate. So again, what I'm going to do is to select A for automation. I'm going to come into here and I'm going to go and find that individual option, which I'm going to find in the main folder. And there is my send to auxiliary two. And it's this absolute value that I'm interested in. So I'm going to select that. Now, at the moment, again, we're going to be at zero dB because that's the current position of that send. But what I want to do is to create two points here, just like we did. Now, previously, what we did was to chop this particular bit of audio and create our region border points. 
I'm going to do it a slightly different way this time. I can use the marquee tool to do the same thing as well. I'm going to select T to open up the toolbar and uh, the toolbox, and I'm going to select the marquee tool, which is here. Now, what this allows me to do is to select a um, a particular area and then create points around that area. And I can do that for automation as well as just the region itself. So if I click over these two little bits of uh, audio, these two individual hits, by selecting that area, when I then come back to the toolbox and I press for the pointer tool and I click on that selected area, what I get to see now is that individual automation nodes are set around the selection that I made, which means I can then drop that to zero and drop that to zero as well. And hopefully now my reverb will only turn on for that moment. So what we've done there is to create another little spot automation effect, this time using the marquee tool. Let's hear those two things together. So it might be quite fun to do the same thing here at the end and just have a little bit more reverb on this last little part of the loop as well, maybe all the way through a slightly longer section of individual beats here this time and just dragging that up to the point where I want it to, to uh, the level that I want it to be. Okay, so what we've done within this video is to look at a couple of ways of being able to add spot automation techniques. Rather than effects being static, they're being constantly switched on or varied using automation. And we've seen a couple of ways that we can apply individual moments of that. Of course, we can just draw individual automation nodes to have values change. But we can also use this excellent little um, technique used from the mix menu, which allows us to create automation points at region borders, creating um, the opportunity to have little automation nodes where one region stops and the next one starts. And we've also seen that we can use the marquee tool to select an area, click on it, and then again, create the automation nodes that we need in order to be able to drag up to the volumes or levels or values that we need for those individual automation points.